Hi there. This video is an exam paper walkthrough of the Educast GCSE Mathematics Foundation Tier Component 1 paper from Summer 2023. This paper is worth 120 marks in total and this is the fifth video of six. It will focus on questions 15 to 19 which account for 18 of these marks. Educast Component 1 papers are non-calculator papers so a calculator should not be used. A little disclaimer, there may be more than one way to answer a question. The methods shown in this video are not the only way some mathematical skills can be applied. OK, let's get started. Question 15. Marcy is carrying out a survey. She wants to find out how often the people in her town use the local theatre. Marcy decides to survey only the 15 people at a meeting of her local drama group. Is this a reasonable plan? And give two reasons to support your answer. So I'm going to say no, this isn't a reasonable plan. And the first reason being, she wants to know how often people in her town use the local theatre, but she's only asking people that are in her local drama group. And they're more likely to use the theatre because it's something that interests them as part of their drama group. So it's biased using people in the drama group. So that's the first reason why it's not a reasonable plan. The next reason is Marcy's only asking 15 people. It's a really small sample size. So that's not going to be representative of all of the people in her town. So 15 people is too small a sample. Viola is arranging some paving slabs to make a path all round a rectangular pond. Some of the slabs are grey and some are white. There are no gaps between the slabs and no gaps between the slabs in the end of the pond. The diagram shows how she positions her first three slabs. So we've got the first three slabs here. The ratio of grey slabs to white slabs is 3 to 1. The pond is 2.5 metres by 3.5 metres. Each slab is a square with side 50 centimetres. A grey slab costs £5 and a white slab costs £6. How much does it cost Viola to make her path? So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to find the perimeter of the pond. Because Viola's going to put these slabs all the way around the outside of her pond. So if the pond is 2.5 metres by 3.5 metres, the perimeter is 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5. Well, 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5. 3.5 plus 3.5 is 7. So the perimeter of the pond is 12 metres. Okay. Each slab is a square with a side of 50 centimetres. Okay. So if it's a side of 50 centimetres and we've got 2.5 by 3.5, we can do 2.5 divided by 0 0.5, which means there'll be five slabs this way. And then 3.5 divided by 0 0.5 tells us there'll be seven slabs this way. So then we'd have seven slabs five slabs but what we need to remember is this extra corner slab here isn't flush with the pond so we're going to have five plus five plus seven plus seven so that's ten plus fourteen so we're going to have 24 tiles but we're also going to have one for each corner in that corner spot as well so we're going to add four so we've got 24 uh, 28 sorry tiles in total now the ratio of gray to white is 3 to 1 and we've got 28 so 3 plus 1 is 4 28 divided by 4 is 7 we're sharing the number of tiles into this ratio to find out how many grey and how many white so 3 times 7 is 21 1 times 7 is 7 so there are 21 grey tiles 7 white tiles 
Grey slabs cost £5, so if we times that by 5, 21 times 5 is £105. White slabs are £6, so 7 times 6 is 42. And then if we add those together, it's £147 in total. Question 17. The bearing of Q from P is 140 degrees. So if we've got Q and we've got P, so if we've taken the bearing of Q from P, so we're starting at P, so we draw our north line, we're going to Q. So what it's telling us here is this angle this bearing is 140 degrees. It wants us to find the bearing of P from Q. So if we were to draw a north line here, the bearing of P from Q would be this bearing here. Now north lines are parallel, they're parallel lines, which means these two angles are co-interior. Co-interior angles add to 180. So 180 take away 140 leaves us with 40. So this must be 40 degrees. Now this whole circle, angles around a point, add up to 360, that's 40, so if we subtract that from 360, we can find the bearing of P from Q. So 360 subtract 40 is 320, so the bearing of P from Q is 320 degrees. The lengths of the three sides of a triangle are in the ratio 3 to 5 to 7. What fraction of the perimeter is the longest side of this triangle? Okay, so the per perimeter would be 3 plus 5 plus 7, which is 15. And the longest side is the 7, so the fraction of the perimeter would be 7 out of 15. The perimeter of this triangle is 60 centimetres. Find the length of each of the three sides of this triangle. So we're going to share into this ratio. Okay, so we're going to share into 3 to 5 to 7. In this part, we already said that they add to 15. So we're going to do 60 divided by 15. And then we're going to multiply each of these by 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 4 is 20. 7 times 4 is 28, and you can check that they add up to 60. I'm not going to simplify the ratio at this point, so if I do, I'm just going to get back to this answer. These are the actual lengths of the triangle. So we have 12 centimetres, 20 centimetres, and 28 centimetres. Question 19. The nth term of a sequence is given by 2n add 9. Work out the difference between consecutive terms. So if the nth term is 2n add 9, the difference between consecutive terms must be 2. Because when we're finding the nth term of a sequence, the number that goes in front of the n is the common difference. But we can check it. So when n is 1, 2 plus 9 is 11. When n is 2... 2 times 2 is 4, plus 9 is 13. So you can see that difference of 2 there. So the difference between consecutive terms is 2, but we can also spot that from the nth term rule. Part B, solve 2n add 9 is less than 99. So we're going to solve this just like an equation, but instead of an equal sign, we've got an inequality symbol. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides because it's the inverse of adding 9. So 2n is less than 90. And now I'm going to divide by 2 because it's the inverse of multiplying by 2. So n is less than 45. You have to make sure you keep that symbol there and you write it in this form for full marks. Write down the number of terms of this sequence that are less than 99. Okay? So, the number of terms in this sequence that are less than 99, n is less than 45, so there will be 44, because we can't have that, this is the number of terms, we can't have 45 terms because it's less than 45, so it's going to be 44. <laughs>